Hey, kid. You think you're an X-Man, okay? Name him. Wolverine, Cyclops, Beast, Gambit, Rogue, Sabertooth, Magneto, Cable, Storm, Professor X, Phoenix, Bishop, Archangel, Apocalypse, Iceman. You forgot some. Mr. Sinister, Omega, Red, Colossus, Juggernaut, Weapon X, Sauron, Longshot, Pyro, Gladiator. Name him. Join him. Collect him. The X-Men Collection. Sold separately. Oh man, X-Men 97 has me nostalgic for things I've never been nostalgic for before. I lived through the whole Toy Biz 5-inch era, and I went to toy stores looking for my Star Wars figures, but seeing that commercial now, 30 years later, I can't help it. I, I'm not going to go back and collect those, but it, it's neat to go back and look. Anyway, I'm Robo. This here's the Rewind. Last week we talked about the Rage Toys Samurai 4 Summer figure and some felt I was a little harsh. Not because it's bad, not at all. Because it's... too good? My thought process was that the double elbows and the pinless joints here would go back and make spring and autumn look worse by comparison even though those are fantastic figures. I know, I know, I get it. I, I come off sounding negative over really amazing action figures, but if they up their game, what happens to the previous ones? What you don't know is that I deleted part of the video where I talked about the color schemes and how not Michelangelo was gonna stand out or make not Donnie and not Leo more drab and more dark by comparison. I cut that because there was no group shot with them side by side. I think I left something about that in. That, how are they gonna look all together? <sighs> Thankfully, my buddy Hank and pointed me to 5K Toys post where they did have all three turtles together and mm, they look pretty damn good. I can't say I was wrong, but I can say it alleviates some of my concerns. Now, obviously, Summer is standing out because of his brighter color scheme, because that represents his personality. Plus, I totally get that they're going for a vintage toy skin tone look here, where, where Donatello's kind of darker, Leo's in between, Michelangelo is the brightest. It doesn't help that orange is the most vibrant out of the three colors here, with purple and blue being, you know, a bit darker. But that's what usually happens when we're talking about turtles. So I was making a mountain out of a molehill. So can I have a volunteer? I will point out that the knee pads and the tennis shoe-like boot things do seem a bit more modern than the other two. But even that's me just nitpicking, trying to find something to, well, it could be bad, but it's not. So yeah, I'm back on this train. In fact, I need to see what's up with the second payment on 5K Toys because I haven't received that yet for autumn. Summer's in pre-order stage. Another thing we talked about last week was the reveal of the Kyoto Amazing Yamaguchi My Hero Academia Uraraka. Surprise, surprise, pre-orders open this week and it looks downright great. We've seen the Figma, we've seen the McFarlane toys. I'm gonna say this is the best of the bunch, at least visually, looking at pictures. Really, the only Reveltech type joint that jumps out is, of course, the shoulders. That's the usual offender when it comes to that kind of thing. And maybe the elbows. They're a little smooth, a little ball-like. The rest, you can't even tell. Well, okay, there's the wrist, but the beefy gauntlets help hide that a bit. And then the chunky boots seem to have a lot of movement while retaining that streamlined silhouette. And then the colors. The colors are just beautiful. But it's the accessories that put this above and beyond. Six face plates with the standard release, that gives you all kinds of display options. Plus they're painted or printed or whatever process they're using. It, it's done so well. And it's fun to do this. Beep, bop. There's also two front hair pieces, the bangs, one where it's just hair, the other has the tiara, the partial helmet, the headpiece. Let's just call it that. And is this the first Uravity to have the Zero Satellite's grappling hooks accessory pieces, along with the debris to swing around? As usual, there is a Kyoto Store exclusive piece that they're calling Vomit Face. So. Yeah. The link to that is in the description. I still have never tried ordering anything directly from them, so I don't know. 
I think we've talked about this before and I've forgotten if people have said, oh yes, I ordered and received it or it's easy to order in the US or not, it's impossible. I, I don't know. Give it a shot. The Midoriya reissue that they announced last week has also went up for pre-order, so if you missed that the first time around, several years back, it's also linked in the description. It's been so long since I've messed with My Hero Academia figures. I need to... <laughs> they're still producing the figures. I'm still looking at the toys like, oh, that looks good, but I have forgotten more about the show than I remember. So I need to go back and then do some catch-up too, because I'm behind. But what I was saying is that I haven't messed with these in a long time, so I can't remember if this is the best Midoriya. Seems like everyone pretty much nailed him. He's the main character, you know? They want to put a little extra effort there. But if you're building an amazing Yamaguchi display, this is obviously the way to go. We have seen Fresh Monkey Fiction collaborate with other companies to bring those figures into their Big Bad Toy Store exclusive Operation Monster Force line before. It is that sentence? I started that sentence. We've seen before. You know what I mean. Most notably, or at least most memorable to me, is the Memory Toys War Bear that they turned into a Sasquatch. So good. <laughs> he just, hey guys, we're gonna kick some ass. Now they've announced that the Maestro Union Fure Planet veteran William will cross over to be Kilowarg, the Night Hunter. It's mostly the same design, big old werewolf in pants and a trench coat, but it's been monster forced up with some camo deco and then whatever that big predator claw arm attachment thing is. This is all we have at the moment. I don't know if all the optional parts that came with Veteran William is gonna be included here or not. I guess we're waiting for pre-orders to go up. And hopefully we'll be getting our first taste of this line very, very soon. They're saying it's on track to release this summer and they've shown test shots from the factory and test paints and everything. So. It's getting closer. Hyatt Toys announced some exquisite super releases this week, which means cloth covered, super articulated 112th scale figures. I haven't dipped my toes into any of their offerings yet, but The Walking Dead Daryl Dixon is tempting. Don't get me wrong, it still has that slight oversizedness that I bring up every time they announce something. But here, with the accurate big trench coat hiding some of the soft goods, it's not as noticeable. I did have the initial thought of, man, those are some big old buttons, but then I went back to reference pictures and the buttons were big on the jacket. Maybe not this big. I mean, at first it was like, God dang, but I love the plethora of weapons too, but that's not the biggest draw for me. It's not even that it's Walking Dead. What my eyes are drawn to is the likeness. Haya is kind of hit and miss in that department. And, and yes, that is foreshadowing. But here, oh man, that I can see it. It's definitely Daryl. Even without the clothes, you just look at the head and oh, nope, that's Daryl. And with an extra head, I feel like I can finally add to that movie Blade shelf. I don't care if he's been on Walking Dead for a decade or so, he'll always be scud to me. And now I need somebody to do a Chris Christopherson figure. Whistler on the shelf, that would be awesome. Haya Toys also revealed their Star Trek 2009 McCoy figure and um, I'm not as nice about it, I think. Oh, that's my general feeling towards it anyway. I don't think it's a popular opinion to admit that I do like the newer movies more than most of the previous Star Trek product. I've probably watched them more than any of the older stuff, except for Wrath of Khan, Search for Spock, and The Voyage Home. It was the 80s. We only had so many channels and they showed those a lot. I also love Carl Urban in, in general, but I also liked his portrayal of Bones. Now, yes, he was channeling DeForest Kelly, who, is hard to beat, but Urban did make it enjoyable. Saying all of that, this ain't great. Remember a long time ago when I was talking about the soft goods, the Haya Toys clothing not fitting really well? Well, it's really obvious here. If I remember right, I also mentioned that they were kind of hit and miss with likenesses. This, I feel, 
is a miss. Unless this is based on a Saturday Night Live sketch where Michael Longfellow is portraying McCoy. If that's the case, they nailed it. Okay, maybe I'm being a little harsh again. In fact, I did find a reference picture that matches this expression exactly. Maybe Urban just has one of those faces. Everything I just said about McCoy also applies to the Hyatt Toy Star Trek 2009 Spock that they revealed today. And I say today because I'm recording this on Friday. You, you know the deal, you know the drill. Except I do find the resemblance here to be closer. Granted, Spock has those distinct iconic facial traits. He's got the hairline, he's got the eyebrows, he's got the ears. But I do see quite a bit of Zachary Quinto in this. Then again, of course, the seemingly hand-me-down uniform. It coming off looking like a baggy sweater. Haya needs to tighten up their soft goods. Maybe source a thinner material or something. Just get it looking better in this scale. He says, having never laid hands upon any of their product or having never watched any reviews on it. All I go by is the promo pictures, but the promo pictures are supposed to sell you on the product eventually. So, I mean, looking at it, nope. Because I know it can be done! Here is the Mezco 112th Collective Marvel Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse Miles Morales. Thin body, tight suit with patches of faux leather still looks great. Now believe me, I know that Mezco also had a learning curve at some point, and they stumble every now and then, but they have way more wins than losses these days. I don't know the general consensus, but Again, I think this looks great. The proportions are very Spider-Verse-y, the web lines are nice and web liney, and then the Miles likeness is very milesy. I don't know why my dumbass hasn't sat and watched Across the Spider-Verse yet. It's right there. It's like most things these days where I'm like, I need to sit down and watch that. Oh, look, toys. I'm gonna go play with those. So I don't know why there's a gummy worm Spidey Sense effect, but I still like it. I, that's not me making fun of it or disparaging it whatsoever. That was just my first thought when I saw the picture. I also thought that, oh, did they put a magnet on the front of that peg and then embed magnets in the back of the head so you could just slap it on there and that's brilliant. And then I read that it mounts on the included posing post. But in this picture, there's no posing post, so you can't blame me for thinking that. You can blame me for thinking that my own idea that I accidentally came up with is brilliant. Brilliant. It's probably been done before, right? But now that I've put it out into the universe, somebody do that because I want to see more figures with effects like that. Spider senses on the back of any of the Spider-Man or Spider-Gwens or anybody's heads. You got Daredevil with radar sense. You have psychics with that thought, mind controlling, or word balloons. You could do that, clear rod with a magnet, stick it on there, just Again, surely someone has come up with this before. I ain't smart enough to think of stuff like that. I'm just imagining the comment of, hey dummy, you reviewed blank just a few months ago and it included that exact accessory. Anyway. If you were on the lookout for a Mezco 112th Collective Marvel Across the Spider-Verse Spider-Man, little tease from Metacom since it's getting towards the latter half of the month. Looks like we'll be getting a Mayfex Spider-Man No Way Home Tobey Maguire, maybe even part of this month's pre-orders? I forgot all about Metacom in the recent, or maybe not so recent, War of the No Way Home Spider-Mans, where, oh, Here's an unmasked, nope, you can't get the unmasked, Hasbro, are you gonna give us unmasked heads? Here's the box set with all three Spider-Mans, but then the thing, and then we go around to Bandai and they show stuff and then take away stuff and here comes their Spider-Mans and then Hasbro came back around with the unmasked heads and oh, nah, nah, hmm. And, and of course, Metacom's gonna wait until the dust clears and everything is settled, legalities put to rest or whatever they had to do there and go, you know what? We can do some pretty good Spider-Mans too. The chin is a dead giveaway that there will be an alternate unmasked head and even optional neck piece. And then of course the pointing fingers. That just calls their shot when it comes to the other Spider-Mans. Although, now that I do think back to all the drama, it was Andrew Garfield who was shown unmasked and then not. And then, oh, we have to 
to go back to Amazing Spider-Man branding for that, so it couldn't be included here, and then this card's different from here, and we're gonna do an extra release coming around. It's convoluted is what it is, kinda like the multiverse. We just have our own little toy company action figure multiverse thing going on. And that's all we have on this, unless they decide to put up their pre-orders before this actually goes live, and then I'm standing here like, I wonder if they're gonna do that. Or maybe this, maybe that. What it comes down to is that it's another option for people who didn't care for the first two releases, you know? You have the whole Bandai versus Hasbro debate thing going. Looks great, less money. Looks great, less money. Here's Metacom. It'll look great and cost more money, but it's another option. A again, everybody gonna do their Spider-Mans. That's just a fact of life at this point. And you know what they say about the facts of life? You take the good, you take the bad. Since we're on the subject of Spider-Man, we might as well go back and touch on this week's Hasbro Marvel Legends fan stream again. Yes, I already did a fast forward to it where I gave my initial quick thoughts and everything. You can watch that right here if you want to. But there's been <laughs> breaking news. There's been developments over the rest of the week. I'm bringing it up again because one, I forgot about pricing and release info. I, in fact, when I was editing that video, I was gonna put in the little lower thirds, forgot all about it. But two, I've also had time to sit and stare and ponder and oh, look at what's going on there. <gasps> Maybe. So let's play a little plus or minus while trying not to retread ground we've already tread. A little positive, a little negative for each. First, Astonishing X-Men Wolverine. How did I miss that that is a completely new torso? It's got the floating peck and the hinge, like some of the newer Spider-Mans. That is a huge positive. I'm gonna stay in the middle ground before going negative and say, does this mean we're gonna see every Wolverine we've seen before with this new articulation scheme? I understand it has the seam lines that is unmistakably astonishing, but still, we've seen where they can easily take stuff like that off and then reuse it for future figures. And it's Wolverine. The torso is Wolverine sized. You can't use that for anything else. Then a negative is the unmasked head. Don't get me wrong, it looks good, but it doesn't have that Cassidy flavor to it. This is one of those rare cases where I prefer the Toy Biz Marvel Legends version. Only with the unmasked head though. Oh man, that figure was gangly and I don't ever want to go back and look at that split in half belt. You remember that? Wee, wee. Warbird, when I read some of the comments saying that they didn't like the thin mask, I was like, but it comes with an alternate head with a thicker mask on it. And then I realized I didn't mention that. I know it was pretty clear from pictures, but it was more of a subconscious thing, I guess. Oh, I like that head, move on. No, 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 no. She's got this, 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 and this, and this. I will say that it's a positive to have an alternate head. Different hair, thicker mask. I did mention that the thigh highs were sculpted, but not the gloves. It would have been awesome if those had matched. So that is a negative. But again, I did mention that. I thought I'd throw it out there again. Bonus negative, Target exclusive, which I'll admit is not as bad as Walmart these days, but still, you put that pre-order in, there's still that fear of, oh no, am I gonna fall into the Target? Do I have to keep saying yes? I still want this target, please send it to me at some point in the future. Superior Spider-Man. Dan, during the fan stream, said that the elevated Waldo pose was held for five minutes or so. A positive is that those seem to be sturdy, or at least we're being told that they're sturdy. But a negative was reverting back to an ab hinge and a swivel at the waist. Until sculptor Dennis Chan posted those to his Instagram saying that everything above the waist was new. And I thought, if it's new, why go back to the old articulation scheme? Then I remembered the backpack. You know how we talked about with Angel that the. Can you get any closer, helicopter? Remember when we talked about Angel having to sacrifice the butterfly's shoulders in order for the wings to plug in securely? I feel like that's the same situation here. Same concept. If there was a dumbbell joint here, the backpack would either have to plug in only up here and you'd lose butterflies, and you don't want to do that on a Spider-Man, or it plugs into the lower part and it's not near as stable, especially with 
for Waldo sticking out of it. So an ab hinge down here maintains enough surface area to plug the backpack in securely while keeping Spider-Man type articulation. Scar, son of Hulk. Plus side, <laughs> I think I said this, way, way better than the original Hasbro offering, which I'm now realizing is 16 years old at this point. <laughs> Wrap your head around that. In the negative column, still just as high crotchy. Is that a scar attribute? Does he just have long legs and then a squatter torso? I don't know. I am far from being a scar expert. Okay, admittedly not as bad. And I'm hoping that loincloth floats where I can push it down a little to even out the proportions. <laughs> I don't know why I gave Sexy Tom the MASH theme song. But yeah, I feel like that would even out the top and bottom more to my liking. <laughs> okay. Iron Fist. Some comments pointed out that the exposed flesh on the torso does not come down to a V like the classic design. This going straight down to the belt is apparently more modern, but that does fit with the modern Luke Cage who is included in this two-pack. Or at least more modern Luke Cage. From what I understand, he's now mayor of New York. Oh man, there's so much to catch up on Marvel. But this being modern is apparently a negative to some people. But this is classic enough with the collar and the shoes and the just overall design scheme, except for that one thing that I'm taking it as a positive because I wanted this version of Iron Fist. And then back to a semi-modern Luke Cage, some are taking that as a negative because it should have been classic. But like I said, we just got classic Luke Cage. Someone did remind me of the 90s Power Man, the 90s Luke Cage with the black leather jacket and the red shirt. And I was like, no, you stop that, stop it. I wanted this look because when I was reading Avengers, this is how he looks, so positive. Negative, it's a two-pack. If you only want one, you've got to buy both. But I want both, so I can't say too much. The biggest plus for the Danny Ketch Ghost Rider is that it made me want a Danny Ketch Ghost Rider. Now that is not an impossible feat. Like I said, I kind of bounce back and forth. I prefer Blaze, but Ketch isn't bad either. It's something that I knew every, or well, a lot of people wanted. I gotta watch myself. I can't say everyone because Anyway, a lot of people wanted this, I knew that, but it wasn't high on my own personal list. Now it is, I've seen the pictures, need it. Negative, a lot of people pointed out that the holes in the front shield are supposed to be headlights. So being able to see through there is not right, at least with most appearances. Maybe it was shown this way somewhere. As soon as somebody said it, I was like, yep, oh, but, being a customizer and enjoying that kind of thing, I'll just take some styrene, glue it up behind those holes. Not a big deal. It's not everyone's thing. I understand that. For the rock, boulder, thing, tease, I, some people said the way Ryan throws it across is very Hulk-like, and I like that because, again, I want that classic Gamma Green Hulk. But a lot of people are attributing it to Hulkbuster because Directly after the fan stream, Dan posted this picture, and if you look down, there's an empty package with Hulkbuster across the bottom. I don't know why a rock would come with Hulkbuster, but I'm not discounting that. Or maybe I'm gravitating towards the idea that this could mean Graviton. Ooh, there's that too. I didn't think about that. But back to Hulkbuster, that was further confirmed when Wolverine and Superior Spider-Man pre-orders went up on Amazon and the blurb at the bottom listed Hulkbuster and Odin. That furthers my theory that the 85th anniversary is gonna be redos and then A-list adjacent characters. Hulkbuster fills the Iron Man slot. Odin is in Thor territory. Well, it's not really a theory. That's essentially what they've shown us so far. But it's a nifty way to run a campaign without going, ah! Here's another Wolverine. Oh, wait a second. <laughs> Maybe my theory doesn't hold any water. Hasbro leads us into my bread and butter. Some new Star Wars Black Series reveals. And it's all reuse, but I am not going to complain about more pit droids. Or that Mando-specific BD droid. Or even another R5-D4, because I am completely in love with their new Astromech sculpt. I can take either this one or the single pack I have 
and do a little paintwork, change it up. This comes with all the accessories we saw there, plus rocket boosters to go on the side. Hmm. Well, okay, that's one new part, but it also dances images of an attack of the clones R2-D2, along with that more silvery C-3PO I was wishlisting the other day when I looked at the Super Battle Droid. Mm, Hasbro. The pit droids are advertised as being from the Mandalorian, as Pelimoto's pit stop pit droids. And I can see that kinda. I need to go back and rewatch all those seasons, but looking at steals, this one definitely appears a lot. This one is definitely from the pit stop. This cream colored one though, not so much. It's similar in the fact that it's a lighter color with a darker square on the chest and then circle around the head, but the overall color scheme is usually darker in the episodes. It's fairly close to the Hot Toys version though, so both companies may be working on some preliminary concept art or something. It may have more to do with cleanliness though, and that is evident throughout this whole pack. Tatooine is dirty, it's grungy, it's grimy, and that's my favorite kind of Star Wars. So looking at this, where there's no sand, there's no oil, there's no dirt, there's no buildup of any kind, it definitely stands out. I can take care of that with some washes and weathering and it'll bring down the colors to more of what we see in the show, but again, not everyone enjoys doing that. Also, my first thought was, wait, she had three pit droids. I can go back to that Disney exclusive Droid Depot pack, take that one, put it here, but no, that one doesn't match any of the three. The third in most pictures, again, I need to go back and watch the episodes, is a darker color with black markings, and that is completely different. And I know that is getting nitpicky with a comedy trio of droids, the three stooges of Tatooine, but again, bread, butter. My thought is maybe that droid could come with a future Black Series belly figure that we absolutely need. Come on. I know they'll make it a two pack and price it accordingly or a three pack, throw in a Grogu and ah, $75. But still it, that one pit droid missing makes me think they gotta have plans. Please. Greener grass though. This is a target exclusive and the original blurb I received priced it at $49.99. When the pre-orders went up on Target, it was priced at $44.99. Don't get me wrong, Pit Droid 2-pack with a little droid, and then R5-D4, all the accessories, couple of new pieces. Sure, two at $24.99 makes $44 or $49.99. Nobody said I was a mathematician, shut up. So yeah, I was okay with that, but I'm even better with $5 off. We need to see more of that. Target also posted up their exclusive Mandalorian Privateer. You do know that there are other color schemes to Mandalorians, right? Hey, blue is awesome. Bing! I love blue. But come on, how many Mandalorians have we had in blue? Throw some red in it or something. Some green? Oh, well, they probably can't go green. It's like, hey, look at that Boba Fett. No, it's not Boba Fett. But yeah, yellow something. Come on. Can you tell which one I pre-ordered and which one I didn't? And that's all I have for this week. Although it's, it's not news. They didn't post this to socials, but I did email Yolo Park about my Transformers AMK Pro Series G1 Optimus Prime model kit. Some people suggested that I contact them because they had emailed them and Yolo Park had responded that they had found QC issues with the hands and maybe the feet. So they were fixing things they weren't shipping out. But when I emailed, it was late at night because that's when I tend to remember stuff. <laughs> it's like, oh, well, I guess I'll worry about this in the morning. But the next day, I got shipping notice and then an email back saying, oh, sorry, it's on the way. I, I don't know why there was a delay. I can't confirm. I trust the people saying that, yes, that, but that's not what they told me. So I can only report what I report. If you're waiting, you may want to contact them if you order directly from Yellow Park. 
contact them. <laughs> Don't say, hey, I ordered from this place. Where's my toys? And it's like, we sent them to there. We have no control once they leave our warehouse. It's going to the distributor. As always, special thanks to the Patreon. I, I was going to say the twinkle in my eye, but I'm more the twinkle in their eye. This weekend, they're going to get a little plate ATs. I've gotten some cast and cave heads and I've completed a couple things and thrown some stuff together. I don't know if play day will happen next week. It's just working on it. I also have a Tales from the Tub all queued up and ready to go, but I can't. <laughs> this is gonna sound weird, but toy companies stop releasing stuff so fast. It's mostly Hasbro. It seems like every week I'm getting, okay, there is, the, the problem of finding the outlet tab on Hasbro Pulse. I mean, I've gotten stuff. I got Tombstone at Target, and I got some other Marvel Legends. I got the Battle Droid 2-pack from Pulse. I got Padme and Anakin from Amazon. But from the outlet tab, I got the Squadron, whoops, Squadron Supreme second 2-pack that I always meant to get. I have the first 2-pack and then Power Princess. It's just that I guess this slipped through the cracks. And then I ordered this. I, I had minor, minor, minor interest in the Green Goblin. Don't have a lot of use for MJ, but I'll find a use for her, especially again at discounted price. I think that's it. Can you get any closer, helicopter? I can actually feel that in the floor. Are you landing in my yard? <laughs> Are you circling? That hasn't happened in a while.